The Bulls were consistently one of the best, if not the best team within the 90s. But since Michael Jordan's departure, they have not won many games at all. They had a glimmer of hope when Derrick Rose arrived, but we all know how that ended up with arguably one of the most confusing rosters in the NBA between disgruntled stars and careers vanishing before our eyes. Today, I have five seasons to bring another championship back to Chicago. And if I can't, I'll be forced to buy big baller merch. So hopefully I'm spared and we can win a championship. We have DeMar DeRozan here sitting at 34 years old, an aging veteran on a one-year $28 million contract I don't know if he's gonna want to come back to the Bulls man to be honest because this team has no direction they don't know if they want to win or if they want to rebuild and at 34 years old he's surely gonna face regression in 2k so I kind of want to ship him off sooner rather than later hopefully get some asset for him maybe trade him to a contender for a bad contract and some draft picks that's something we can look into uh, Zach Levine he's been in the midst of trade rumors all summer feels like the past three years he's been in every single Bulls trade rumor uh, three years 129 million he got got the bag he definitely puts up the stats but they're not really contributing to wins this could be another player i look to trade for some assets to rebuild for the future i think that is the direction we are going to be heading in because this team is not a playoff team in my opinion i mean vucevic sitting 33 years old on a three-year 60 million dollar contract come on dude he's going to regress in 2k he's probably going to be an 80 by the end of the season and i just don't see him winning with 33 year old vucevic and 34 year old DeRozan. then we also have alex caruso of course three and d threat very very good on defense he's a good shooter but still he's just one of those rotation guys he's obviously not going to lead a team to a championship you can see his stats right here uh very good role player don't get me wrong but not starting caliber if we want to win a championship and then of course patrick williams 22 years old hasn't exactly panned out the way that the bulls hope for him to uh he's picked fourth overall in the 2020 draft he's put up decent stat lines but nothing that is crazy no nothing that's gonna blow your mind he's put up efficient games though uh 46 percent from the field almost 42 from three in this uh we're gonna hope he develops at a 78 overall though i'm not sure what his potential is in this game let's actually check that right now 82 so hopefully that can go up uh, I don't know what his max potential is. I don't feel like checking it out right now. But after this season, we're going to have to decide if we want to give him the bag or not. I mean, he is going to be 23 years old, still going to be young, still going to fit in the timeline of this rebuild. But he's probably going to command 20 million plus. So if he doesn't develop, it could be a bad investment. And I guess the rest of the team besides Kobe White is very expendable. Andre Drummond, the Hall of Fame quote unquote center. Uh, if you don't know, he claimed that he has a Hall of Fame career. I guess you can make somewhat of an argument for it. I mean, Lots of rebounding. Did he win DPOY? I can't remember if he did or not. No, but he was on third team all NBA. Nah, he's not an all. He's not a Hall of Fame player. He's not a Hall of Fame player, but he is somebody who knows his role. Uh, he provides good defense, so that's something we're going to look forward to. Maybe a good rotation player if we keep him on the team pass this season. But yeah, like I said, the rest of the roster is very expendable. Of course, we have Lonzo Ball, though. He is injured the rest of the season, may not even come back for the rest of his career, so we don't know what his future in Chicago is going to be looking like. Hopefully, he can come back healthy for us and doesn't regress too much. It's probably just going to be bumped down to a rotational bench player, maybe six man or something like that, because I'm looking to upgrade this team on all facets. Heading into the season, though, this is what the rotations look like. Kobe White 35 minutes per game we're gonna get him some starter heavy minutes because we want him to develop for us i think he is only what 23 years old yeah so we still have some room for progression alex crusoe 32 minutes zach levine 36 derozan 34 vucevic 33 patrick williams 25 i might increase that i'm not sure uh javon carter 16 andre drummond 15 and tory craig 14 i might actually put dallin terry at that position uh instead of tory craig because i want terry to develop and i'm actually gonna put ao at 16 minutes again 23 years old i want him to develop as much as he can so i was just offered this trade by the kings uh kobe jones in a 2027 first round pick for andre drummond I'm going to do that for sure, man. We get some assets. We get a young player. Let's go. All right, y'all. At the trade deadline, we're absolutely terrible. 17-34, and 12-15 and 15 at home, 5-19 and 19 on the road, which is absolute buns with a negative 2.3 point differential. So we're going full fire sale right now. We're trading anything we can get for some assets to rebuild for the future. DeRozan, you're probably gone. Vucevic, you're probably gone. I'm still deciding if Levine is going to stay or not. I mean, 28 years old, 86 overall, still fits in that timeline for a championship window. So I'm not sure, and I don't even know if a team will want to take on his big contract. So that is definitely uh, to be determined right now. And looking in Team Intel, there's actually a lot of teams buying right now. So it looks like we might find a spot for DeRozan, maybe even for Levine. But what's actually crazy, around the league, there's some teams that are targeting DeMar DeRozan. I mean, the Wizards are, and I think there's another team as well. Where did I see that? The Clippers. All right, so this is what I came up in regards to a trade. DeMar DeRozan, Terry Taylor, and a second round pick for Jarrett Allen. 
and Patrick Mills. Um, I guess Patty Mills is now on the Cavs. Jared Allen was the stem of a lot of trade rumors in Cleveland, so hopefully this provides him a new home. He fits the timeline a lot better. He's on a good contract as well. 25 years old, 84 overall, and getting paid $20 million over the course of three years, so that is really good for the cap space in the future, so he could potentially make a splash in free agency in a few years. And DeMar DeRozan, this gives the Cavs a win-now player. They obviously want to compete right now. They have Donovan Mitchell. They have Garland. They have Mobley. Obviously, DeMar DeRozan will probably get slotted at the small forward position this gives us a solid player for our timeline on an attractive contract let's see if we can get this done and uh <laughs> i guess i have to switch demar Derozan's position to small forward to get this done so hold on and wow actually switching him to small forward puts his overall up by two. Oh my gosh so actually let me see what trade i could get with this all right i did trade finder and now they're actually giving me an offer for jared allen so i'm just gonna take this straight up uh demar Derozan, terry taylor uh, i don't want niang but you know, three years, $8 million deal at a 73 overall is not going to cut it. We'll get him, but we're probably going to eventually just trade him on, in a salary dump for somebody. And uh, we get Jarrett Allen, though, so let's accept that trade. Yes, sir. And with Jarrett Allen's arrival in Chicago, that means Vucevic is going to have to leave. He's already displeased. His morale is down. So let's see if we can find him a suitable trade partner as well. All right, now this is getting ambitious, bro. Vucevic, Torrey Craig, Julian Phillips, a second round pick and a future first for Kaminga, Moses Moody, and Gary Payton the second. Obviously, the Warriors have a short championship window they have aging veterans so I think Nikola Vucevic gives them a better chance of competing rather than Kaminga rather than Moses Moody we've seen them do this with James Wiseman traded him for some assets that they could compete with so let's see if we can get this done right here and obviously it doesn't look like it's gonna happen maybe if I switch the first round pickup maybe give them a 2027 does that spice it up a little bit no okay what about I don't really want to trade 2024 lottery especially for the Portland Trailblazers they're probably gonna be bad so let's not actually do that and now Alright, this is the next trade that I cooked up. We know the Clippers want to win now. They have KJ Martin. He's 23 years old. They have Marcus Morris Sr. right here. He is 76, but he is on an expiring contract, and he's definitely going to regress in 2K. I'm going to try to finesse a 2028 first-round pick because the Clippers are notoriously bad in that year in 2K. And, of course, they get Nikola Vucevic, who 84 overall, 3 years, 60 million. We get off the books with his contract, and they also get a competing player that could put him in position to win a championship this season. Let's see if we can get this done right here. They want to counter-offer it. Uh, no, we'll just give you the second-round pick. Okay, that's not going to happen, so we're just going to take off the first and do this straight up, and they agree to the trade. So yeah, I think I'm happy with the trades, man. We expanded the championship window. We got off the books with a lot of money. So maybe this free agency, we can make a splash in it. And uh, I'm going to simulate the rest of the season. I'm sure we're going to continue to suck because we got even worse and we were already doing pretty bad. So I'll see you at the end of the season. All right, yo, at the end of the season, Joel Embiid MVP, Rookie of the Year Wemby, Six Man Chris Paul, DPY Giannis, and THT is the most improved player of the year. And obviously, I don't think we're going to have anybody on any of these teams. Oh, Caruso, all defensive first team. Okay. Okay, we like to see that, but nobody else anywhere else. And yeah, as expected, we were absolutely terrible. 31 and 51, 20 and 21 at home, 11 and 30 on the road. Uh, the point differential went even worse than it was at the halfway point with a negative 3.2. Let's look at some of the stats, though. We didn't do that at the halfway point of the year. Levine is killing it with 27 and a half points per game on very, very solid shooting percentages. You can see him right there, almost 54% from the field and 42% from three. Absolutely amazing, Miro. I feel bad that we have such a bad team around him. Uh, Jarrett Allen, though, 16 points per game, 13.3 rebounds, 1.4 blocks. I was expecting him to have a little higher of a block uh, stat, but 1.4 is really good nonetheless. And then Kobe White with 13. KJ Martin with 10. I think that's a career high. Nah, he had 12.7 last year, but hey, he has very good shooting percentages. I definitely want to keep him around. Uh, he's not on a team option, unfortunately, so we might have to pay up a little bit to keep him around, but if he develops good for us, it's worth it. Uh, Patrick Williams, kind of disappointing. 28 minutes per game, not even scratching 10 points per game. Uh, hopefully he develops or else his future with this team is in jeopardy. Here's Marcus Moore, senior. Dallin Terry, though, uh, breakout season, career highs in everything shot pretty good 48 percent from the field we want to get that three-point percentage up though uh caruso obviously he is not known as an offensive player but he got it done on the defensive end two steals per game 1.1 blocks per game he could have been a candidate for dpoy as a guard man just saying uh ao 6.3 points per game javon carter six and wow the bubble rematch the lakers versing the heat let's see who wins it all and it looks like the heat have actually won it in seven 
over the Lakers. Jimmy Butler is your finals MVP. And wow, LeBron's really gonna go out like that, dog. All right, let's hope our luck is good, man. We have the number four odds of getting the first overall pick. Please, 2K gods. And we have Portland at 12, but I think they're lottery protected. So we're definitely not going to get that this year. We'll probably get it next year. And let's see what happens here. We are number three. Okay, we went up from the projection of four. So I'm not too mad about that. We get number three. We're going to have a chance at a good prospect. Let's go. And we're definitely lacking in the guard department. We don't know how Lonzo is going to be once he comes back from injury. So we either need a point guard or a shooting guard in this year's draft. With the first pick, the Rockets choose Bronny James, bro. Oh, my God. That is crazy. So we're at number three. We have a chance at Ron Holland. Okay, that's nice. Matt Buzelli's Isaiah Collier, 78 overall, man. I'm highly considering it. Ceiling Hall of Fame Russell Westbrook. Okay, 6-4. Could play the one. Could play the two if needed. Uh, Hall of Fame James Worthy. Hall of Fame LeBron James. Ron Holland. Do we draft him and put him at shooting guard? I think that's the move here. We definitely need a LeBron James type of player. Ron Holland, welcome to the Bulls, man. And he is sitting at a 78 overall, so one of the best players in the draft. Uh, a welcome addition, of course. We're going to see what his overall goes to as a shooting guard, though. Ah, uh, 76. All right, we might just keep him at the three, man. We'll bump. Okay, I didn't see Levine was a small forward in this game. We're going to bump Levine down to a shooting guard. Uh, that puts his overall down by one, but it's okay. So, yeah, that's looking pretty solid now, man. And we still have KJ Martin, who could be a backup. Torrey Craig opted into his player option. Dallin Terry, we're going to accept his team option. And Lonzo Ball declines his player option. That is bold because he may not play the same for the rest of his life. $21.4 million a year. I don't know how he's going to pass up on that, but whatever. We're obviously going to extend the qualifying offer to Patrick Williams. Hopefully, we don't have to offer him the bag because I'm not sure what he is expecting. And uh looks like DeMar DeRozan is in free agency, so we pretty much traded him for nothing. Uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers got no return on the trade, to be honest. So good thing that we traded him because we don't know if he would have re-signed with us because he probably wouldn't have, to be honest. And what's crazy is we don't even have the bird rights on Lonzo Ball. It still lets us re-sign him, though. Uh, I think I'm going to definitely re-sign him because if he comes back and he's still good, uh, that's a good asset to have on the team. I mean, he provides good three-point shooting. Good. He's one of the best perimeter defenders in the league. So, yeah, for sure, we're going to try to bring back Lonzo. And, yeah, it looks like we're not going to be able to bring back KJ Martin, bro. Come on. So we were able to bring back Lonzo Ball, and we also got Xavier Tillman as the backup center on a three-year $28 million deal. So that is definitely good because Jarrett Allen and Xavier Tillman both really good centers. And this is crazy, man. Patrick Williams expects $32 million a year as a 78 overall 22-year-old who averaged how many points a game? 9.3 or something? Yeah, 9.3 points per game, bro. Absolutely crazy. He's probably going to have to get shipped out if he accepts the qualifying offer because I'm not paying him $32 million a year. I'm sorry. All right, in player progression, Jarrett Allen up three, which is awesome to see. Levine stays the same. It says negative one, but that's just because of the position change. Uh, Patrick Williams goes up three, so maybe he earned the $32 million dollars i don't know man depends how he plays the season or we try to sell high on him and maximize the trade value who knows what we're going to do there ron holland of course stays the same kobe white up two xavier tillman up one caruso goes down two so he's facing regression probably gonna have to trade him as well because he's gonna be bad after this season and borderline unusable uh ao goes up two. javon carter down one lonzo goes up one surprisingly uh dallin terry up one i thought he was gonna go up a lot more because he had a breakout season sort of and uh tory craig down three niang down one and kobe jones up one yeah i just realized i cannot trade patrick williams man no trade clause and i have to wait till january 26 so it looks like we're stuck with him we're gonna have to give him the bag and then maybe trade him after that uh, Caruso though I want to see what I can get for him because I do not want him on the team he is a good player regression is very bad on him and yeah I see this trade in trade finder Caruso Torrey Craig for PJ Washington I'm for sure accepting that man hopefully PJ Washington at 26 years old still has some progression left in him uh, and this team is looking pretty solid obviously we were probably a little better roster on paper wise last season but we have a lot of promising talent I mean Patrick Williams he's going to develop some more Kobe White's going to develop some more Ron Holland of course and uh, we definitely have that timeline looking a lot better we don't have really any 30 plus years old players besides Niang but he's not playing he's out of the rotation so a lot of players entering their prime are almost in their prime our, our squad only had 13 players on it so I went into free agency of course there's a lot of 70 overalls a lot of 80 overalls because free agency is bugged out in this game Game, but we were able to get Luke Kennard on the minimum at 77 overall. He's a welcome addition to the squad. And I'm not sure if I recorded it because I kind of was talking without recording the actual video. But Lonzo 
Ball did return from injury in case I did not show that already. The Pistons just offered me this trade, AO Javon Carter for Marvin Bagley III and a 2027 first round pick. I'm going to accept it, man. We're going to get some more draft assets. Uh, Marvin Bagley, he has been disappointing in real life, but in 2K, 79 overall, 25 years old. Definitely has some room for improvement, so we're going to accept this trade. That does kind of overload us at the four position, but Patrick Williams or PJ Washington can play the three as well. And bro, I literally don't know how, but we're still popping off right now, and it looks like we still haven't met the minimum. But we're popping off right now, bro. 17 and 7 so far this season. And I swear, y'all, this game makes no sense, man. You would look at our team and not think this is a championship roster. Like, you'd think, oh, they're maybe fringe playoff playing team i don't know but we're sitting number one in the standings at 37 and 13 18 and 9 at home 19 and 4 on the road with a 10 point differential and yeah like i said bro this team is just going absolutely crazy we have a lot of depth we don't have that star power but we have a lot of depth so maybe that is what the key contributor is in us winning so many games but i mean levine 26 and a half points per game he's playing really good ron holland has a great rookie season so far 17 points six rebounds solid shooting splits Jarrett allen another solid season a little bit dip from last season though but 15.3 points per game 10 and a half rebounds 1.4 blocks 64 percent from the field uh kobe white also so in limited minutes, 22.3 points per game, but adding 11 and a half points per game. He got 32 minutes a game last season. Uh, he dipped almost 10 minutes, but he's still keeping up with the production. So that is really good to see. Lonzo Ball in his first season back from injury. Uh, much of the same, 11.1 points per game. Eight assists, though, career high so far, 1.5 steals per game. Shooting splits are not that great, but he's getting it done playmaking-wise. Uh, Marvin Bagley, 22 minutes, 10.6 points per game, six rebounds, solid shooting splits. Uh, Patrick Williams still hasn't taken that next step. He still gives a, an efficient game, but 10.1 points per game, I really want to see more than that, man. P.J. Washington getting it done off the bench. Uh, Luke Kennard getting it done off the bench. Dallin Terry still uh, much the same from last season, except his efficiency dipped a lot. So hopefully that doesn't kill him in progression. And uh, Xavier Tillman, he's getting it done on the boards. But yeah, we're going to see how far this team can carry itself. I'm probably not going to make any moves. The team chemistry is 100%. The fan interest is 100%, of course. And uh, yeah, we are the true underdogs this season for sure. We're actually going to re-sign Levine. Uh, I'm going to do a fronted deal and try to lower the money as much as we can. Try to get him on a really team-friendly deal. Uh, two years, $23 million. Let's do it. He accepts the offer. At the end of the season, John Murray is your MVP. Rookie of the year, DJ Wagner. Uh, Daz, Mero, six-man, DPOY. Wemby, wow, Wemby with the second season craziness, bro. 22.6 points per game, 12 rebounds, almost three blocks, one steal. Wow, that is pretty historic. He also wins most improved player of the game. Let's see if Zach Levine made a first, third. Any team no, we had a really good record. I was hoping with his stats he'd at least make a third team, but I guess not. We get Lonzo Ball, though, on all defensive second team, which is good. Ron Holland, of course, on all rookie first team. 17.3 points per game, 6 rebounds, 2 assists, 1.4 steals, 1.1 blocks, getting it done on all aspects of the floor. So that is really good to see. He got his numbers improved from the halfway point. And uh, let's actually look at the rest of the stats. I want to see if Levine dipped a little bit. He, I think he dipped a little bit, but he still put up a good season. Uh, only 32.4 minutes per game. If he's playing 36, he probably averages 27, 28. I don't know but yeah all the stats are pretty much the same Lonzo got his numbers up a little bit which is good to see uh Patrick Williams still stalled out at 10.3 points per game and uh yeah we had a really solid season I'm really happy with how this team played true underdogs like I said and uh we actually are the first seed in the east which is so, so weird to say with this roster we don't have really any star star players I mean Zach Levine could be considered a star player but in this game he's an 85 overall so I don't know man we end the season though 59 and 23 top of the NBA by far I mean the second best team is the Boston Celtics at 52 and 30 and then we have the Houston Rockets at 51 and 31 so we are the favorites to win the NBA championship this season so hopefully we can get it done whoever bet on the Chicago Bulls team at the beginning of the season might see a fat return on their investment man because they're probably like plus 20,000 to win the championship to start this season and now they're the favorites so let's see if we can get it done here um, I'm very excited to see what we can do I'm gonna simulate the plan right here and we're up against the Pacers, who uh, are also a really good up-and-coming team. They have Tyrese Halliburton, Benedict Matherin. They added Buzelis. They added Pascal Siakam, Miles Turner, Tyus Jones, Andrew Nemhard, Isaiah Jackson. Oh, my gosh, bro. This team is pretty stacked, not going to lie. And compared to our 
our team, they match up pretty well, if not better. I mean, they have an 81 overall coming off the bench. Uh, we're going to see this battle. If we get knocked out in the first round, that will kind of be anticlimactic because we had a really good season. So simulate through game one and the Pacers win 142 to 119. Levine dropping 25. I am going to adjust the rotations, actually. Uh, I want to play the starters really heavy. So we're going to run an eight-man rotation, play the starters heavy. And I'm going to hop into Simcast right here. Let's see if we can get it done. Uh, we're off to a good start, though. Outscoring them 35 to 25. And then in the second quarter, keeping up the momentum. And it looks like we're going to blow by the Pacers with ease in game two. 116 to 96 Levine adding 41 Holland 22 we love to see that Pacers did not have anyone over 20 points per game or not per game but in that game I should say so in game three uh the Pacers are coming off the bat outscoring us but in the second quarter we're coming back a little bit it's a back and forth battle it's gonna be very close let's see what happens in the final minutes and it looks like they're gonna get this game 115 to 103 and uh they have a really solid team performance I mean everybody's in double figures damn near and uh we just couldn't get it done that game so we're down two to one can we tie up the series in game four here and off the bat we're coming in strong outscoring them 30 to 25 and then outscoring them 29 to 16 in the second and yeah we get this with ease uh easy cake walk right there and uh levine drops 32 patrick williams 25 ron holland 23 jared allen 14 and 16 we love to see that and uh can we get one up on them and go up three to two? Second quarter looking good so far and in the third quarter, it's a battle, but I think we're going to get past them. And uh, we win 121-95. to 95. Good, solid team performance once again. It looks like Tyrese Halliburton had a very, very quiet game. Seven points, four rebounds, nine assists. Just not getting it done. Look at his playoff averages right there, 15-10. and 10. As a star player, you're not going to win games with th those stat lines. So let's see if we can get it done in six games. Hopping back into SimCast once again. And off the bat, we outscore them 33-20. The second quarter, 36-24. to 24. And yeah, we're going to get past them. In the first round, 133 to 86. We love to see that. Jared Allen with a crazy game, 28, 14, and five blocks. Let's freaking go, dude. And uh, we're going to see if we're going to be up against the Heat or the Knicks. And let's go. The reigning champion, the Miami Heat, have been knocked down the first round. So we have the New York Knicks we're up against. And we might have a chance here. I mean, they have much of the same roster. It looks like they have the same exact roster. They added OG Ananobi. They have Hachimura and, uh, and Finney Smith. So I'm not too worried right here. Sim pass game for one. And uh, we win 117-109. to 109. Levine drop at 34. Jarrett Allen, 18-12. Can we get up 2-0? And look at that. We get up 2-0. 123 to 114. Levine dropping 36, 8, and 6. And I'm going to hop into SimCast. See if we can blow by them and get a sweep right here. I'm not sure if it's going to happen. In the first quarter, though, we outscored them by one. Second quarter, we're going crazy, bro. We kept up the momentum. We outscored them every quarter. We win 138 to 117. Ron Holland, though, 33-13 two steals let's freaking go dude and uh we might sweep the knicks in the second round here let's see what happens first quarter coming in with a lot of momentum uh looked like they almost got back for a second but third quarter no use of even trying knicks we get you 118 to 103 pack your bags go home we're on to the eastern conference finals bro oh my goodness up against the raptors who have grady dick 75 overall starting they have jalen mcdaniels 76 overall starting as well man they have a lot of 70s in their starting lineup i think we got this in the bag and of course they added james harden i'm not sure who they traded for uh and they have scotty barnes who is injured right now bro we caught a big break here we might reach the finals in our second season yeah he's out for the season severe right ankle sprain oh my goodness dude we got really lucky game one yeah we're gonna take that bro i think we got this in the bag 111 to 85 uh, i'm gonna sim cast these games we'll see what's up with it but i'm fairly confident to say i shouldn't say that they outscored us 39 to 31 in the first quarter we're coming back though oh my god this is a back and forth game right here bro come on now come on now i'm speaking too soon bro i'm already biting on my words and yeah we let this game go 128 to 123 i thought this was gonna be a, a walk in the park but they tie the series up I'm really hoping, though, that the momentum swings in our favor. And uh, this game, it looks like it's sort of coming to that, man. <laughs> oh, my God. Absolute blowout right now. Holy crap. 115-92. to 92. Uh, Harden dropped 19. Not enough to best us, though. We're up 2-1. to one. I'm very, very happy with this series so far, bro. Oh, my God. First quarter, we come out the gate swinging. We outscore them 36-18. to 18. Second quarter, much of the same. And, yeah, this is another game. 
walk in the park 136 to 100 levine dropping 32 let's freaking go i'm gonna just simulate this last game can we get the gentleman sweep and we're in the nba finals in our second season and it looks like we're probably gonna be up against the memphis grizzlies who have a tough team marvin bagley out for the season with severe left ankle sprain no worries though we have a lot of depth and you see the two mvps right there we're up against the grizzlies and they have a tough squad but they have a 75 overall in their starting lineup. They added D'Angelo Russell as well. Wow. And Valanchunez. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah, they kind of have a lot of depth, not going to lie. And uh, hopefully their weak spot at small forward helps us out a little bit. But, of course, they have John Morant, who's a 96 overall, 2K Sim God. He is a beast in the Sim in this game. Um, just the, the rotations for sure. Uh, we're going to have all the, the bench players playing a little bit less because I want these starters to shine, especially Levine. Levine's got to be playing like 40 minutes. Ron Holland, 40 minutes as well. Uh, Lonzo Ball, I guess, 36. And then we'll have Patrick Williams, 35. A lot of defense on this squad. Uh, hopefully, Levine could put the team on the back offensively and Ron Holland, of course. And uh, we'll see what happens. I'm going to simulate through game one. And uh, looks like we take it. What? 125 to 117. Okay, let's go. Jarrett Allen, bro. 31, 14, one steal. Absolutely killing it. And Levine as well, 34 points. But that's kind of expected out of him. But Jarrett Allen underrated pickup right there bro and uh in simcast we have the momentum on our side we outscore them 37 to 29 in the first quarter and we're keeping this momentum up bro absolute blowout so far and we win 154 to 89 bro holy crap kobe white in 19 minutes dropping 22 points we have a bunch of 20 plus point scores lines of ball also almost a triple double 28 and 14 four steals two blocks getting it done on all aspects of the floor man i'm so happy he came back healthy and didn't regress at all and uh, John Morant 21 and 10 not gonna get it done buddy so let's see if we could go up 3-0 on the Grizzlies and the first quarter we come out swinging once again second quarter oh my god they come back and it's a back and forth battle right now man oh my goodness going in the fourth quarter tied up with a minute 28 left let's go normal speed and uh, once it gets to like 30 seconds we're gonna see what's up with it so 30 all right 27 seconds we're up by one can we secure this dub and go up 3-0 on the memphis grizzlies yeah like i said up one with 27 seconds left uh they're probably gonna foul here and we throw a terrible pass what kind of pass was that dog oh my god and if yeah lonzo good defense we draw the foul there send brandon clark to the line he might miss one bro who knows we're gonna see what happens here so yeah, he catches the first one to tie it up. That is so unfortunate. I don't know why he would throw that type of pass, bro. Up one, and he catches the second one. But up one, you could have threw the easy inbound, and they probably would have fouled you, sent you to the line. But he tries to throw it in the paint. Like, what kind of logic is that? So, Levine, we need you to work your magic right here. Can we get a play going instead of being stagnant, please? Patrick Williams with the screen. He's open, bro. All the way to the rim. Let's go. Patrick Williams, bro. Oh my gosh, clutch bucket right there. Played the pick and roll to perfection. We're up one with 7.9 seconds left, bro. And yeah, right here, bro, we're going to have to play some clamps, especially on Ja Morant. Luckily, Lonzo Ball is one of the best perimeter defenders, and he is playing those clamps, bro. He is not letting up on him. And oh my God, get that sh ah, Get it out of there. Let's go. Jared Allen with the clutch block to secure the third game. We are up 3-0 now. Let's freaking go, man. I would have been so mad if the CPU cheese happened, but I'm so happy we were able to get it done. Uh, John Moran dropping 42 and 17. He had a very good game, but Ron Holland with 37, bro, as a rookie in the finals. His playoff stats are right there, averaging 20 points per game. A very, very good pickup. Uh, Lonzo Ball also with a great game, 25, 5, and 10, two steals. Man, I love this team, bro. And yeah, I bet y'all would never thought that this team could get this done, man. I'm not going to speak too soon. Who knows? Maybe they come back and push it to seven games. But so far, the momentum's in our favor. Let's hope we can get the sweep right here. And so far, it's not looking good, man. So far, it is not looking good, and we're not able to get the sweep. They outscore us, outwin us, 131 to 111. Uh, Levine dropped at 23, Lonzo Ball 21. But uh, Desmond Bain came up big, and John Morant had a sort of quiet game behind these two. I mean, 25, 6, and 7 is still very solid, but poor shooting percentages. And uh, it looks like we're not going to be able to get the sweep, but can we at least get it done in six? That is the question. So far, it's looking good, though. Momentum's on our hand, and uh, we outscored them 42-28 to 28 in the third. And look at that, bro. NBA championship, Ron Holland dropping 33. Uh, Lonzo Ball, 26-12. and 12. Jarrett Allen, 23-13. and 13. Oh, my goodness, bro. How? How did we do that? Lonzo Ball is the finals MVP. That would be a crazy comeback story. Oh, my goodness.
is, man. I wish I would have went in the playoff stats, but it's all right. All right, y'all. So that is the video. We got the job done. Uh, who would have thought it would have been with this roster? Literally in the first rebuild on 2K24, I was doing with the Spurs. I had a better roster than this and couldn't get it done in like six seasons. And then with this roster, I got it done in two seasons, man. Uh, just a lot of defense. Of course, Zach Levine being the main offensive powerhouse right here. And I'm just so happy we were able to get it done. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, comment, like, and subscribe. This might be one of my shortest rebuilds ever. Not gonna lie. Got it done in two seasons. I just, I'm in disbelief about it.